in one minute can you say father encounter me again and afresh this morning i have come again hungry and passionate to know you more i need your touch i need your encounter i need the move of your spirit i need you to open my eyes take me from where i am to where i'm supposed to be see brothers and sisters there are much to learn there are much to experience there are much to enter into if we are diligent to follow the lord this morning god has another package for us yesterday he began to speak to us on passion for divine power conductors of divine power and with many of us i got a lot of testimonies a lot of you know people were sharing what god did in their life the way they were touched and blessed by what god taught us yesterday this morning again i want you to pray and say father i have come hungry and thirsty for you i want to experience you again come to me father can you pray that prayer when a study of the book of Acts, and I said, I always rem remind us that this book must lead us to our own acts. Acts of the apostles will lead us to acts of our own time. We must act. We, we don't just study the book of Acts and we will not act. Father, we are trusting you that this morning your word will come again by your spirit and we move us into action so that as we learn from the acts of the apostle, we will also begin to act in, a, in accordance with what we are learning. Holy Spirit, you are fully welcome. We, can, we cannot do without you. We are totally depending on you this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, I want us to press our study further. In the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9. We have studied chapter 8, but I know there are one or two things that uh, we still need to touch in that chapter but let's move on to chapter 9 first let me read from verse 1 and Saul yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any of this way whether they were men or women he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand, and brought him into Damascus. And it was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him the Lord said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he pray prayed and has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he has done by the, to the saints in, at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house, putting his hand on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scarce, and he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Give all this thank you. 
just for a while. Now, please pay attention to the first thing the Spirit of God is pointing concerning Saul. The, the, the report now has shifted to Saul. And it began by, I mean, continue to report the persecutions that he began from chapter 7. The Bible said in verse 58 of chapter 7 that the witnesses that witnessed against um, Stephen, they laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man called Saul. Remember that these witnesses were bribed to find a false witness against Stephen in order to, for him to be stoned. And you know, according to the Lord of Moses, if you are to witness against somebody that will be stoned, there should be somebody that will be standing and all the witnesses will have to carry their clothes and put down at the feet of the person. And Saul offered himself to be the person. So, in other words, he is at the helm of affairs of the killing of uh, Stephen. Are you getting that? Now, when you move to chapter 8, before chapter 9, you look at verse 3. Please pay attention and look at verse 3 of chapter 8. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house, and hailing men and women, committed them to prison. When I saw this verse, I have to look at it again and again. There are several things that came to my heart as I was looking at it. He said, as for Saul, I don't know about others. As for Saul, other people may be busy with some other things they are doing. As for Saul, not being paid salary by anybody. As for Saul, he brought out his time, his energy. Saul brought out his resources to move to every house. You remember in Acts 5.42, the Bible said that in the temple daily and in every house, the apostles, they cease not to teach and to preach Christ. Every house. Then there is this young man again on the negative side that came up and said, single-handedly, I am going to ransack every house. I don't need anybody to pay me salary for this. I am ready to go to every house. The Bible said he made havoc of the church. I have to read that from some versions of the scripture. I noticed that they are saying that Saul was trying to destroy. That havoc is destroy. He, 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 his intention his goal, his purpose is to destroy the church. And one way he's doing that is to ensure that everyone in every house that is saying, I belong to the church, I am following Jesus, is arrested. Whether you are a man or a woman, he doesn't care. As long as, you know, there is, there is a way you treat women. But Saul said, if you are a man or a woman, you must be arrested every house. Now, I want to just have a picture of what is going on by Saul. Possibly, he, must, he, may, he may have some followers that are moving with him. Are you getting me? Because for you to catch one person, you may need to be two. Are you, are you, are you there? Now, do you know that there is a risk in what Saul is doing? Will you agree with me that if he can enter a house and he is in trying to arrest somebody. Are you, are, you, are you there? Maybe the unbeliever, the unbeliever brother of a believing brother can give him a dirty slap. Are you, I want to see the risk. Because the unbeliever doesn't understand what he's doing. But he can decide to fight for his believing brother. By, so Saul knew that there is a risk in this job. He knew that there is a danger in this work. He knew that, that he can be poisoned. He, he can be killed. He considered the risk. He considered the danger. And he brought us his time. He, he, there is energy for you to carry a human being. And you are pushing the person into prison. And he was very detailed. Every house. I have to ask a question. Saul, what is it that is actually motivating you? 
for this kind of detailed labor. There was nobody that is paying him. He is doing this on his own. I say, what manner of zeal is this? That somebody is so zealous to do something against Jesus, against the church. Why the people of God are reserving their strength, reserving their resources, reserving their energy, reserving their life. I mean, just a little, a little sacrifice. You see many believers dodging. Do you know that what Paul is doing is like an evangelism? But this one is more risky. This one requires physical energy. Are, are you getting me? Now, where we began to read in, in chapter 9, verse 1, look at it. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord. He has not, at, at, at this point, he has not stopped. The Bible says, yet is breathing out. You see, when I looked, when I read it, I said, what does it mean to breathe out? In other words, look at, can you breathe out? You know, breathe, breathe in and breathe out. Now, what does it mean to breathe? He's breathing out. In other words, he is walking every second. Now, when you, you know, unconsciously you are breathing in and you are breathing out. Now, the breathing in and the breathing out, they happens in seconds. Am I correct? Now, Saul is still working very hard every day, every night. In the night, he will plan his strategy. He say, I have covered the uh, streets, this particular street in Jerusalem, the following day, and plan his plotting on how to cover the other street. And you know, if you are going to arrest people that way, for policemen, sometimes they will appear very early in the morning. When you are not so, there is a lot of intelligence, there is a lot of calculation. He is breathing out, even when he's sleeping, he is dreaming on how to go about this work. What a commitment! This man is so serious in this work. The Bible said at this point, he went unto the high priest and desired of him letters, not a letter, letters to Damascus, to the synagogues. What is he going to do with the letter? That if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. So he, he has collected enough chains and added money he's going to use to buy more in case, maybe in Damascus, in case if the chains that he, he has has finished and there are more people to arrest. Because you can't bind people with that chain. There are enough handcuffs with him. Are you following me at all? What manner of man is this? That dedicated himself this way. To fight. To walk. To labor. In order to, 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 to persecute the church of Jesus. So zealous. Now listen. He has finished the local persecution ministry. And he needed visa for international persecution ministry. So he went for the visa. He has ransacked every house in Jerusalem. And at this point, he believed that he has concluded with Jerusalem ministry. So he now wants to step out. You know, Jesus said, you shall be my witnesses first in Jerusalem. Then in Judea and Samaria. And there's this... <laughs> oh God. Are you, are, you, are you following me at all? What, what manner of man is this? Where is this day coming from? As he was now on his journey, do you know that he can meet kidnappers on the road to Damascus? Can he meet armed robbers that can deal with him? Remember that in the time of Jesus, he gave a parable of a man that was moving from Jer uh, Jerusalem to Jericho. Do you remember that parable? And armed robbers attacked him on the way, showing you that there are armed robbers attacked in those days. Are you getting that? So what of what if armed robbers attack Saul on the road? You know, he has some men he's going with. Yes, because the Bible said when the, 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 the encounter happened, there are some men that were with him. They also fell down. These men are men he has recruited as men of the force that will you know, be part of the force in persecuting people. These are ministerial partners and co-laborers. Are you getting me at all? How can a man in the opposing kingdom be so zealous for nothing 
no reward, no promise, nothing. Yet, those of us that are in the kingdom of God, no zeal. The first challenge the Spirit of God is bringing to us this morning is the challenge of zeal. It has become so, I mean, deplorable that the people of God, we, the people of God, we are not zealous in the advancement of the kingdom of our Christ. When I was studying the zeal of Saul in pushing persecution against God's people, and he's knocking on every house, arresting people without shame, without fear, what manner of man are we supposed to be in advancing the kingdom, in preaching the gospel, when there is a promise, when God himself will be happy with what you are doing? Paul was so zealous. Now listen, remember that he is spending his time. Do you know that, I don't know whether, I'm, I'm just trying to understand how he's, 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 he's eating his food, where he's getting the resources from. Because this work he's doing requires some resources, requires some, I mean, time, energy. What is he doing for a living? How, uh, does he mean that he has made some money before and he's now taking the money from his um, bank account and he's sponsoring himself and supporting himself? For nothing, just for nothing. is a serious challenge for us. You know, when you read Titus chapter 2 verse 14, listen, you know, the problem we have today in today's church is lack of zeal. We don't have zeal. Zeal for God. Zeal for the work of God. Let me say categorically that it will take zeal for any man to go for evangelism. Listen, if you see any brother, any sister that goes out to preach the gospel, to talk to anybody about Christ, that person has demonstrated zeal for the Lord. Are you following me? Now, listen. You see, the word zeal is talking about passion, burning. There is something burning within you. Now, for you to know whether you have zeal for God, it is not about what you are doing for yourself. It is about what you are doing for others for the sake of Christ. What you are doing on others what you are doing for others for the sake of Christ, for the sake of, in the name of God. Are you, are you getting me? Okay. Zealous, be, being zealous is something that goes beyond you as a person. Anything that is around your life, listen, if it is for you to, you know, you can say that you have zeal when it is time for you to get money, get certificate, you see yourself here, that one is not zeal. Are you getting me? That one is, is we call it selfishness, is around you. When it is zeal, it is, you don't have anything to gain from this. It is not about your glory. It is not about what you are going to gain. It is about what the person you are doing it for we gain. So, it will take some level of love and passion for that person for you to be zealous for him. Now, why is Saul zealous like this? Do you know why he's zealous? He believed that these people are destroying their religion. So, this is actually a religious zeal. Saul is not a fornicator. He said concerning the righteousness that is in the law, I am blameless. Philippians chapter 2, verse Chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Concerning the righteousness that is in the law, whatever Moses has commanded in the law, do not steal, do not kill, do not commit fornication or adultery. I am blameless. I don't, you can't find me breaking the law. He said, I'm a Hebrew of the Hebrews, a Pharisee. Are you getting that? He now said, concerning zeal, persecuting the church. That's the report in Philippians chapter 3, 5 and 6. Concerning zeal, how do I demonstrate my zeal for my religion? Persecuting the church because the church is coming up with a theory, with a movement that is trying to play down on the tradition of the elders we receive that is guarding this religion. So I stood out and said, not when I'm alive. 
it has been here all this while. I don't know who this Jesus is. Possibly, when Jesus was alive and around, Saul was maybe in secondary school. Are you getting me? He's just a young man, and I, I think he must have hated Jesus with passion at that stage. But now, he has become a graduate of law from the school of Gamaliel. And he is like, this particular religion, we have to guard it. We have to protect it. Now, for you to know that what Saul is doing is coming out, out of zeal. He's doing it not for himself. He's not trying to get something about his life or money or reward or pay, but for my religion. Are you getting that? So, when you are talking about zeal, it has to go beyond you. When I see you pray and say, God, bless me with car, bless me with house, bless me. These are good prayers, but they are not coming out of zeal. When you are going to demonstrate your zeal, is when you begin to intercede and say, God, Nigeria, thy kingdom come in Nigeria. And you spend one hour praying for Nigeria. You spend two hours praying for Africa. And you are praying seriously and fervently. When you see such kind of person, you will know that this person is zealous for God. Is zealous for God's advancement of God's cause. When it is about you, when it is about what you are going to gain, when it is about you know, how you are going to progress. Now listen, the whole church currently is built on personal what? Gain. Yes. Breakthrough. Miracle. Is it miracle for your neighbor or miracle for you? Are you getting me at all? You see, that's what is motivating people. That is what is making people alive. That's what is giving people, you know, energy to push, to attend meetings, to attend programs. Oh, this man of God is coming. Listen, this thing also applies to spiritual. This man of God is coming. Oh, I, I need to tap anointing. I need to... There is no thought around what God himself wants. There is no passion to go beyond yourself to that which God. If it is not God and his, the advancement of his kingdom, it is not zeal. Are you getting me? Now, um, Titus chapter 2 verse 14 said that Jesus gave himself for us. Please, let's read it. Titus 2 verse 14. He gave himself for us to redeem us from all iniquity so that we can become people, peculiar people that are zealous of good works. Let's read it together. One to go. Okay, let's start from verse 13. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Verse 14. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity. How many iniquity? All iniquity. And then do what? Purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Peculiar people. One thing about these peculiar people is that they are what? Zealous. This is the missing element. This is the missing link. When somebody is saying, I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost, do you know the motivation for so many people? Not for them to start preaching the gospel. It is for them to speak in tongues so that when other people are speaking in tongues, they will also speak in tongues and they will feel fulfilled that I am not, you know, intimidated here. I, 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 I am not inferior to any other person here. If you speak in tongues, I can also speak in tongues. So you cannot intimidate me. Are you getting that? That is one of the things that is motivating people to look for speaking in tongues. Not because, you see, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be what? This matter God is dealing with this morning is so important because, listen, without this particular zeal, you can't afford to take the risk and face the danger and expend the time, energy, resources that is involved in being a witness for Christ. Are you getting me? Because when you carry yourself into a village and you are there for evangelism, for a mission work, you ask yourself, what are they paying? You know, that's why, see, listen, that's why several people are not ready to serve God with zeal, with passion. They are not ready to depend on, you see, people are looking at what remuneration they are going to get. If, let's say, Calvary Way, for example, now, please pay attention, is you know, the full-time laborers here is receiving 
150,000 naira salary per month. And once you start, you have an official car, an official house. Please tell me how many persons will be ready to apply for full-time laborers in this level. <laughs> will you be able to handle the, you know, the influx? Are you getting me? News will spread everywhere. Once you make a call for application, you get ready because to arrange the application letter alone is enough job. Are you getting me at all? Now, why is it that people are not ready to give themselves to the work of God when there is no clear physical reward they will gain? No zeal. And even those of us who are, you know, you are doing business or you are, you know, yesterday I was talking with somebody who is telling me that I find it difficult to preach. I say it's because there is no money attached to preaching. Marketers, bank marketers, some of us are working in bank. What is the, I ask this person, what is the work? What, what is the name of what bank marketers are doing? Hey, evangelism. They are going out for evangelism, bank marketers. Insurance company, anything in marketing is what? Evangelism. And you see people doing it with passion, with zeal, talking to people. Why? Because there is what? Money attachment. That is not coming from zeal. If you want to know who is zealous for God, just know who will bring out his time, bring out his resources, bring out his energy, and without looking for anybody that will commend you. Sometimes you see people, they get angry because they were not acknowledged. Their effort, their labor were not recognized. And so they will say, I won't do again. Since the one I did, nobody was able to acknowledge it. There is no zeal there. This is around self, selfishness. Until we are delivered from this, until we are cured from this, the work of God will keep on slacking back, even in our generation. An average human being born of Adam is selfish in nature. I don't even know how Saul, where he's coming from. Because for him to become that zealous for his religion, and he's not looking for money. Can you imagine this man? Can you imagine this man with his passion? He's not even a priest. Eh? But he's ever ready. The priest, high priest and the, the chief priest, they were at his back. And say, go. We may not be able to go to Damascus, but you can go on our behalf. And so he's traveling not to go and make money in Damascus. Not to go and buy land and build hostels in the Damascus uh, School of uh, Health. In order to be collecting rent. Are you getting me at all? This man is going to Damascus for a mission. And he's so focused. This is a mission he has perfected locally. So he already has skills that he's going to use. How is he going to bring them from Damascus to Jerusalem? He's not even trying to negotiate with Damascus um, prison warders in order to put them there. He said, no, 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 no. I will make sure that I transport them. With which money? Can you transport people from place to one place to another without money? Every expense is on his head. We need to be challenged. Because... The way we are preserving our money, preserving our house, preserving our this, before somebody will think of the work of God, he will think about himself first. Eh? We want to use God. You know, even when we are saying God, prosperity, prosper me. What people give God is change, left over. Left over. When you say, let's give for the work of God, you see people, including some of us that are pushing, uh, uh, pray, preaching to others to give, we are reserving the major aspect of our money. Say, this one is my capital. This one is my major income. I don't want to... Ah! Where is the zeal? Was he not Jesus that entered the temple in John chapter 2, 13 to 17? John chapter 2, 13 to 17. He entered the temple. He saw people that are buying and selling in the temple. And the Bible said he made a court and began to push and overthrow everything they are doing. And as he was pushing and listening, there is a lot of risk in what Jesus was doing. Because the people you are overthrowing their tables, they will get angry too. You are, you are, you are not the only person that knows how to get angry. You are not getting me. Somebody prepared for business, calculated the amount of money he is going to make today. He has already made such amount yesterday and he is already anticipating. And you just come and begin to scatter his business. Do you know that two of them or three of them can agree and say, who is this man? Where is he coming from? And beat him up. 
Are you getting me? But Jesus, he considered the risk. Now, he was not even doing this for what he's going to gain. He's not even the warder of the temple. He's just a visitor. Are you getting me at all? He has to take the risk. The problem is that we are not ready to take the risk. We are not even ready to spend our energy, our time. That is why we are not going for evangelism. Do you know why some of us are not going for evangelism? You are not ready for people to insult you. You are just like, anytime you remember, should I go for evangelism? The first thought that will come to your heart is, is it not to go and knock on people now and they start looking down on me? So it is this self-preservation, preservation of self-glory that is keeping us. We are not ready to sacrifice. It takes a man that is zealous for God to put down his own selfish interests aside and take up the interests of the, of the Savior. Look at Jesus. Do you know what it took him to forget about his glory, forget about himself, forget about everything, and came down to the earth, become man in order to save man? It takes zeal to do that kind of thing. And Saul, yet, breathing out, threatening a murder. If, if you read it from some other version, you say, Saul is, you know, releasing murderous threats to the church. Murderous, that is, he's threatening them that those of you that are in the prison, if you don't recant, I will kill you. I'm giving you 30 days, 10 days to re recant and change your mind. If you don't, I will kill you. That was what he was doing. He has already concluded the arrest of so many of them in the prison. Are you getting that? And he's now threat every morning he will come and threaten them. Like Goliath that threatens the people morning and evening. Are you getting me? As he was threatening them, he now said, okay, he may have handed over the threatening ministry to one of his followers in Jerusalem and said, let me go for international. On his own. Why you are waiting for invitation? To be invited in Togo to preach. Somebody is traveling to Togo on his own. Are you getting me at all? This is a mission work. He doesn't need any synagogue from Togo to invite him. He is going to Togo with a letter to meet synagogue leaders and say, I came here for a ministry. I have a... Oh my God, are you getting me? How, how do we get this zeal? How do we, how do we become zealous for our God? When the disciples wondered at the level of anger that Jesus exhibited in overthrowing the table of money changers, the Bible said they couldn't understand this. They couldn't add it up to the gentility they have witnessed all this while in Jesus' life. This is happening close to the end of his ministry. I hope you remember. It was when he entered Jerusalem like a king that it happened. So they have watched Jesus for years. They have never seen him get so angry like this. And they were like, wow. This man can be... There are times disciples wondered at Jesus. At another time they wondered was when he was talking with the woman of Samaria. And they were like, ah, does he talk with a woman? We have never seen him talk with a woman like this, alone. At this time, he was doing something that they have never seen before. They were so, so amazed. And the Bible said, they remember that it is written that the zeal of your house has what? Consumed me. The zeal of your house has what? Eating me up. Eating me up. Look at Philippians chapter 2. Look at Philippians chapter 2. I want to see verse 19 to verse 21. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy shortly unto you that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. Everybody verse 21 together. Want to go. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. Did you see that? Is there anybody there with a version that is not King James? Anybody at all? Can you read for me your version? What, what's your version? The is almost like King James. But read it. Let me hear what is it. Verse 21 alone. Uh -huh. They all, oh, this is powerful. Everybody is looking after his own interests. Uh -huh. Not the interests of Jesus. Who else? Others are interested only in their own lives. 
They do not care about the work of Christ Jesus. Which person is that? Easy to read. Read it again. Very interesting. Can you just start? I think I, we need to start from um, verse 20. I have no one else like Timothy. Who genuinely cares for you? Others. Which others? Is he talking about unbelievers? Is he talking about unbelievers? So, what we are seeing in the church today, they didn't start it today. We need money to do the work of God. Somebody has the money, but instead of bringing out the money for the work of God, he is reserving it for his own what? Interest. David said, no, Solomon, Solomon, he said, and he did, I will not build my own house until I finish building the house of the Lord. Are you getting that? He put God first. Others are interested in their own lives, their own life. This is exactly the picture of what we are having today. Can you finish it up? Just read verse 21 again. I'm so, this verse is, please, I don't know whether you have read this verse before. If you have not, take note of it. If you have, study it again. Read it again. Others are interested. Other believers, tongue speaking, chanting believers, they are interested only in their own lives. In their own, I want to get married this year. Oh God, they want to use God to get married. I want to buy a car. Oh God, they want to use. I want to build a house. They are interested. Excuse me. Can you a bit become interested in the things that concerns Jesus? There are things that are bothering him. He came and died for men, and yet men are not saved. Can somebody take it up and say, whatever I can do as a person, whatever I can do with my time, with my energy, with my resources, no matter the risk, I am out. They are interested in their own matter. That is why some brethren that has received call for full time, they say, no, 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 no. I want to be doing business to be sponsoring the work of God. I want to be, a, a, excuse me, see, not even that, that, not even that kind of thing is, is find any place in the work of God. Because whether you are full time or you have to be doing the work of God. It's not only for, everybody has to be fully engaged in it. Can you finish it? They do not care. So it has happened before. In the time of Paul, it was only Timothy. So let's look at Timothy. Who is Timothy? Eh? Paul met him at, uh, I think it's Debe or so, where he ministered in the first missionary journey. And as he was visiting the church before, before he started the second missionary journey, small boy. And the Bible says he desired to go with him. He desired to go with him. And Timothy said, here am I. Send me. I'm ready. And he said to Timothy, you have to be circumcised. He said, I'm ready. I know that maybe Timothy is in primary school or secondary school. Someone was asking me, what about your education? Let me ask, did Timothy get into education again? Talk to me now. From that time he joined Paul, did he go to school again? If it is today, if it is today, you will see people that will be telling you that you, you need to go to school. I'm not against going to school. I have gone to school. But there are times God will call a man who didn't go to school and he will forfeit going to school. Are you getting me? Peter, James, John, you know, sometimes we have seen this thing happen. These people, they did not go to school. Jesus called them and they did not return to school. He didn't send them to school. Timothy gave up everything. There is no record that he even gets married later. Are you getting me at all? Timothy, he gave up everything and was following Paul. He was not even the anchor person in the work. He was just an assistant. Are you getting me? Just following Paul, he's not even looking for his own glory. That is what we call zeal, passion. Everywhere Paul is, is there. At the end of the day, when Paul was living, when Paul was living, he was in the prison, a Roman prison. 
he has to write the last letter to him and say, I am handing over everything I have done to you. You are going to be the successor. You will take off from where I stopped, Timothy. Paul saw that. He said, for every other person, is looking for his own interest. But Timothy is different. May you be the Timothy of our time. Amen. Whatever that has come over brethren, that is making them, we are talking about evangelism, they are not ready for evangelism. We are talking about sponsoring the work of God, they are reserving them. Whatever that has affected us, I prophesy to you that you will be exempted. May your heart be delivered from selfishness. May you, like Saul, in the negative sense, give himself out totally. His resources, his energy, ready to take all kinds of risks just to advance the cause of Judaism. Can somebody become challenged this morning and say, Jesus, you have done it for me. I will do it for you. Can somebody become ready and say, this campus, there are several young people in this campus. I will be visiting this campus every weekend. You, are, you see, some of us are going to work. You have some spare time. Can you use that spare time, that time you have, to visit some campuses to preach the gospel to students, to minister Christ to the neighborhood, to people around? Can, see, I have said it before. It will take zeal to preach the gospel. If you see somebody who is going out for evangelism, that person is a zealous person, especially on your own, especially not being motivated. You know, there is this kind of you know, motivation you will just give about evangelism. One week, two weeks, one month, people will do gri 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 and I'm talking about somebody who is, that's how you know people that are zealous. It's not people that are always uh, uh, coming for anointing service, miracle service, and all of that. No, 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 no. Most of those things are selfishness. It's around self. Are you getting that? What about Phinehas, the son of Eliezer? In Numbers chapter 25, Numbers 25, verse 6, 6 to 15, this Zimri, the son of Salu, Zimri is the son of Salu. And Salu is one of the chief, chief elders of Israel. Eh? Are you following me? Salu is an elder. I don't know whether he's among the 70 elders, but the Bible says he's one of the elders. His own son, Zimri, went and picked a girl, Cosby, a Midianite girl. Why God was already very angry, sent a plague, and the plague was ravaging people because of immorality. This boy carried a girl, entered in the camp, went into a, 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 a tent and began to commit fornication. And people are being punished for fornication. People are dying. The Bible says Moses was there looking, watching. Other elders were there watching. It was this young man. May you be different. May you be angry enough, not for your sake, but for God. That is what we are talking about. He took up Javelin and killed both of them. And God said to Moses, I am the one that gave you ten commandments. Do not kill. Commandment number six. But this young man has killed two persons at the same time. I love this killing. Eh? I said, do not kill as a commandment. But this particular killing, I am interested in it. Listen, you have to be angry enough to kill, to kill people two at a time. And God said, I'm happy. In fact, God said that what uh, Phinehas has done, he was zealous for my sake. Read your Bible. He was not zealous about himself. It was not about his self-glory. It was about the glory of God. It was about the advancement of the kingdom. It was about the progress of the work of God, the things of God. Who will have this heart? For God, not for yourself, but for God. Who among us, look at Saul, in the negative, so zealous. By the time he got converted, you will notice that the same zeal he was exhibiting in Judaism, he carried it into Christianity. And that was why we are, we are preaching Paul today. You can't talk about Christianity without Paul. See, listen, you may not be gifted, but if you are zealous, you cannot be ignored. You may not have the gift of um, seeing vision, revelation everywhere. You may not have all this kind of, but if you are passionate for your God, you see, it takes zeal to act. Acts of the apostles 
are acts that are coming from zeal that men has executed on behalf of God, on behalf of Jesus and the advancement of his kingdom. Do you know why? If the Bible, listen, you have observed that everything we are reading that is properly recorded in Acts, you will still notice, you will still notice more and more, is acts of preaching, teaching, following up souls that we are that repented. The, if they will report prayer, it will just report it shortly. If they will report any other thing, just but the main thing they are reporting is what? Preaching, teaching, evangelism, trying to build up. That's the, 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 the acts that was recorded. Now, it is only zeal that will produce such acts. Are you getting me? You are not zealous. And that is why, listen, listen, are you listening? Many works that are going on in the, in the, in the, in the body of Christ today are just around you come for fellowship weekly and the man of God will teach on kingdom wealth. Eh? Are you getting me? The man of God will teach on uh, this topic this, and people will get blessed and all of that. You can hardly see an intentional you know organized leading of pe God's people into actions of zeal. Reaching out, preaching the gospel, winning souls, following them up. It's very hard to see. Now, remember what we read in Titus 2 verse 14. He gave himself that he will redeem us from all iniquity. Now, before you become zealous of good works, it is not when you have an iniquity. All iniquity. Now, one of the attackers of zeal is when you have one iniquity in your life. Are you getting it? The reason why so many believers are not zealous for God's, for, God's, for God's work and for good works is because if you ask them to go out and preach and minister and you know, win others, and the person you are asking to go out and minister to others is still telling lies. Will he be zealous to go and tell others that Jesus can save you from lying? That's why it has to redeem you from all iniquity first. Are you following that verse? He said he gave himself. Out of zeal, he gave himself. And the reason why he gave himself is so that he will redeem us from all iniquity. If you are still being, I mean, you, you are still being uh, bedeviled with covetousness, for example. You are still under the, 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 the habit of love of money. You, you can't be zealous for God. You can't even have the energy to preach to others that you can be free from covetousness. So the first thing is to redeem you from covetousness. The first thing is to redeem you from lying. The first thing is to redeem you from anger. You are not yet free from some iniquity. It is when he has re redeemed you from iniquity that you can become zealous for good works. So that becomes... One of the things that we need to pay attention to. Redemption, not just from some iniquity, but from all iniquity. I remember somebody telling me some time ago that I like giving, giving uh, uh, towards the work of God. But my problem is that I'm not sure of my life. After giving, I, am, I still fall back to sin. I still live in sin. So the thing is ma making me weak. I don't even know whether God is accepting what I'm giving. Are you getting that? I want us to look into what God is showing us this morning. I, I, I sincerely speaking, I, I have read Acts chapter 9, 1 to 17 or so. My intention is that we should study it. I just want to pass through Zale, chapter verse 1 and 2, and then we start studying other aspects. I didn't know that the, the, the Holy Spirit is going to concentrate on the matter of Zale this morning. So we need to pray. And I want you to really pray. This matter... It may look uninteresting. It may look, I mean, as if it's something we are familiar with or something we know. But excuse me, if you're not zealous, you're not zealous. And it will keep, you know, showing in your life, in your attitude. How do we come out of this? How do we become passionate? How do we become zealous? You know, Saul's case is quite different. Do you know that the soldiers that went and witnessed to people that they were sleeping and the disciples of Jesus came and stole his body. Matthew 28 reported that some soldiers were bribed. Matthew 28, I think 11 to 16. Eh? 
the Pharisees and all of that, they came and bribed them and tell them, say that while we are sleeping, the disciples came and stole his body. And those soldiers, they say, if Pilate hears it, he will sack us. And they say, don't worry, when he hears it, the same way we prevailed against him to crucify Christ, we will also come out in mass and shout. We know his weakness. We will always, you know, shout him down. He will not touch you. <laughs> that was what gave them confidence. And they now began to knock on people's houses. Listen, when they knock on your house, they say, excuse me, we are soldiers that we are watching the tomb of Jesus. While we are sleeping in the night, the civilian disciples came and carried his... Um, Meanwhile, we are paid, we are being paid to go and watch over his tomb. And these people were not ashamed. They have collected money. And the money they collected is giving them the morale to go round. You remember the witnesses that accused Stephen falsely? They were bribed. But when I was looking at Saul's case, I noticed that nobody gave him any dime. What kind of zeal is this? We need to pray this morning and say, God, wherever they zeal, that was in Saul for Judaism came from. Eh? Do something in my life. If somebody can be zealous for Judaism, look at it. It's not only Judaism. Can you see Islam? Can you see Muslims? Can you see other people from other religions? People who are not even born again. But look at how passionate they are for their own religion, for the things they are doing. Some of them are ready to die. For their religion. Am I correct? Somebody is ready to bomb himself and bomb others just for him to, because he has been promised something that is not existing. But we are preserving our lives. We are preserving our money. We are not, we are not ready to spend our time. We are not ready to, I mean, allow our ego to be trampled upon. We are trying to avoid and evade insult. That will come when you start knocking on people's houses or you start preaching the gospel around. We are trying to preserve our self-respect. We are as Jesus said, if you want to be my disciple, deny yourself. So we need to pray. Something is happening at the root of our life this morning. And if we can tackle it and say to God, Timothy was a man, not an angel. Even Saul, that later became Paul, he was so zealous that when he was writing the book of Romans, he said, I have fully preached the gospel. Romans 15, verse 16. I have fully preached the gospel from Jerusalem to Ilirukum. Fully preached the gospel from Jerusalem to Ilirukum. Do you know what this stance is talking about? I pray that God will help us. Please rise on your feet and begin to pray.